Like you have no idea. It's just being in the opportunity, just being available to be in the place when you need to be. Yeah, can man. open up so many doors, and I wouldn't have been able to do those if I had some nine to five job or had to ask permission to go to this thing or things like that. I wouldn't have been able to do them. Period. Point blank. Emilio the Honey Butcher, Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Honey Badger Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Honey Badger Hour, episode 66. It's your boy, the Badger, and today we're back with a very special guest coming all the way from the 305. We got our local Miami artist, all right, independent artist. Yes, we got my man in the house, D.U. Ivan. Thank you for having me, my man. Appreciate it. What's happening, dog? Nice to meet you, my brother. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Likewise, bro. I've actually seen you stand up. No way. Yeah, yeah. I've seen you do stand up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. snap. That's right. I'm, a, I'm a big comedy fan. I saw that. We have a lot of mutual friends, yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a huge comedy fan. No way. Where did you see me doing stand up at? I thought. I think I saw you somewhere when I saw, I saw Polly. I'm pretty sure it was with either with Polly, Polly McPaul or something. Yeah, yeah, maybe That's at the, the Taurus, probably That's at the, the Taurus. I think it was the Taurus. In the yeah. Coconut Grove? Yeah, Taurus. Uh, I think I saw you there and I saw you at the, that spot um, in Sunset Place, that restaurant in the corner. Oh, Sunset Place, dog. What's that corner spot that used to be a bunch Inside of Inside Sunset Place. No, like if you're going, if you're on Sunset, it's like, it, it's in, it's like at the edge of Sunset, the corner of Sunset. It's that, it's that corner restaurant. Have nots threw something there and you did it and you did it and you did it there. It's like a bar and a restaurant. Oh, okay. I'm draw I'm drawing blank right now, but I think I know what you're talking about. Like, uh, it's been like thirty different things. It's yeah, been like yeah, a 30, yeah. It was Marino. It changes the names and everything. Yeah, it was like Marino's this, right? for a shoeless for just a second. Just on top there, just on top. Now it's like the corner. It's like the corner on oh, sunset. Oh, the one in the corner. Okay, okay. Damn, yeah. that's what's up. Dog. I that's saw you awesome, there, and I saw bro. you at Taurus, I think too. Ooh, your boy's getting it in, dog. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying? Work, work, I love work. it. That's Absolutely. why I moved to Miami. It was so cool that you say that, dog. Because one of the reasons why I moved to Miami is like to start doing comedy. Oh, dope. And I had the podcast over there, but I was like, yo, when I get to Miami, I want to start doing like artists and stuff like that, you know? Awesome. That's great. Yeah, bro. I forgot how I stumbled across your page, but uh, I think you had a video with one of the... Did you ever do any... Did you do any collabs with, with other comedians Caballo. and stuff? Yeah. Oh, yes. That, Caballo, I did, uh, I did a skit with him not so long ago for Estrella Insurance. That was hilarious. Yeah. That was good. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. So, my man, um, you're a local artist, right? From Miami. Well, yes. from Tampa, Florida. Born I was born in Florida Tampa. Man. I've yeah. been here since I was like nine years old, but I mean, I pretty much grew up here and I became a man here, so yeah. I consider myself from Miami. For sure. Nine years old is in Miami, dog. Yeah. Nine years old before puberty? You're That's what I'm saying. Till I exactly. Die. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Who are you when you're nine? You know what I mean? Like, you're nobody, you're nobody yet. You're nobody yet. You ain't even been developed into the savage yet. Precisely. You feel me? <laughs> I became a savage here in Miami, so I'm I'm, I'm dead. I'm dead. Hell all day. yeah. I love it, bro. Yeah. And man, so what made you want to get into uh, music? Have you always been an artist? Or? I mean, I've always like been really, uh, I guess, drawn to it. I didn't really, exp I didn't know it was going to be anything until it just, it just kind of happened. I mean, I remember in like college, I mean, high school was when I first got like the inkling. I used to beatbox a lot. Like, okay. all, yeah, I was the guy, like, I was the guy they'd call. They, they'd look for me in the halls. Like, yo, Ivan, we're going to, we're going to rap. Come on. Like, come on. You know what I mean? So I was never even a rapper or anything. I was always the, the, the beat guy. And then I turned that into college. Like I started actually making beats, but it was like side hobby shit. You know what I mean? And then making beats turn into like, oh, they're pretty good. And then people want to rap on them. So I was like, all right. And then, you know, that evolved into like, oh, I think I can rap better than people are rapping on my beats. <laughs> like, yeah. So, so, so then I started rapping more and writing more. And then it just evolved. And I, had a, I was in a couple bands. I was in a band called 2AM. I was in a band called uh, Your Mom's Favorite. I have that shit inked on me and shit. No, <laughs> yeah. What kind of band? Is it like a rock band? or is No, like no. Music... Hip hop. Hip hop. Hip -hop oh, hip hop. Oh, it's a proper band. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. For sure. Sorry. Damn, what was your first band? What was the first group? 2 a.m. was the first one. All About Music was the first one. 2 All About 2 a.m.? Yeah. And you started that, you were doing that in college? Uh, that was, yeah. Like, I was a little after college. Like, I, I dropped out of college after a couple of years. Nice. And so a few years after that, I started doing that. And I was just working, you know, working and doing the band stuff. And the band started doing well. And then um, that band kind of dissolved. And then I started YMF, your mom's favorite. I started that for a while. We're doing, like, I started making an name for myself, doing a bunch of shows, doing a lot of shows, actually. And then I was kind of carrying the whole weight, so it kind of evolved from that to doing solo. Because I was like, if you guys want to carry more weight, we can keep going. If not, I'm going to do solo. They didn't, so I kept going solo, basically. When you were doing your own weight, so like you were making the beats, you were doing a lot of the production and stuff. So I mean, for I mean, yeah, for YMF, I was the producer, the manager, and the lead. <laughs> 
so it's it a was, lot of work it was dog. a lot man it was a lot so i just like if i'm gonna do that i might as well just push my own stuff it's a lot less headache and a lot less to deal with and it's like you know it's a lot it's expensive man like <laughs> being an independent artist is very expensive you know what i mean like video shoots studio all that stuff so you know when you're when you're pushing all the way for a bunch of people it kind of feels like you know you know like i'm you want a little bit of help and i'm still cool with every single person that was in the band like we're still all gravy everybody everybody understands but you know so i just kind of transitioned to the solo thing and i've been doing it for like so i've been solo for like 10 years nice yeah about, about that and it's kind of you know it's worked out it's worked out all right so that's dope and when so when you're independent like how do you explain that to the regular people like so independent um separate from being to like a regular record label right well record label they obviously more exposure less work to do but way less money um way less money right yeah like way less money like when you're independent you make you make every dollar you know what i mean you have to put in every dollar también, but you make every dollar and you see where every dollar goes and that's another thing that's another thing with record labels that at least you know i haven't had a deal yet but i'm very familiar with all of them because i've been studying the game for quite a while but i mean i've i've had you know little things here and there that would be close to things but i know very well as you don't even know unless you get people a good lawyers involved everything that's happening with the money with the budgets that are going to you it and must the, be crazy with it's the basically too, right? alone it's basically alone that's you know what i mean they give you big loans and they give you but the network is incredible so i don't know i think if you get the right deal it could work out but i think right now is the time for independent artists you yeah I, mean? I was gonna say with the internet and the way things are going yeah. with spotify and social media if you, you have really... the grind for it yeah. it's the time for the independent artists you have a team and a grind and then you know and you need a budget you definitely need a budget but if you have those things then it's the time for the independent artists if you don't have any of those things then tr maybe try to get signed yeah, you know I, sure. I think it's an individual thing you know what i mean because yeah, there's been definitely. many times where i've thought about trying to get signed like for real i've definitely been like maybe i should just get signed bro <laughs> maybe it's a, it, it, you know who knows what's gonna happen but maybe it'll be easier on me yeah, like if you don't get signed, you might be able to like write more and make more, like produce. What is it like? Just writing yeah. and you, well, you're gonna still make your own beats, or no, if you get I, signed, you would try to have somebody make well, your beats. Well, I don't always make my own beats. Now I've been working with a couple of producers, but I've been that I started as a beat maker, and it's funny. I just I've been getting back into producing a lot lately. I'm gonna produce for a few artists now that I'm I'm really fucking with. It. Nice. I'm yeah. happy about it. Yeah, yeah, it was dope. But I got really spoiled with a couple of producers. Um, shout out to Miami B Wave, who nice. doesn't spoil me. Fuck you. You don't spoil me, but you do give me dope beats. When you give me beats, they're really dope. <laughs> but Chris Dean spoils me. Chris Dean is a, is my producer that like right now like the main one of the main ones I work with, and well the main one I work with, and that guy just showers me with heat. Just, like just, beats, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My latest songs, Miami B way. I'm mean, excuse me, I'm Miami B. Bro, he, that was just gonna say those beats that. are hard, yeah, yeah, bro. Your last few that I was going on on your Toma Tuesdays. By yeah. the way, today's Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to get you in on the Tuesday, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you already know what's up. Bing bang. But yo, I was gonna say those beats. Yeah, your last few beats have been really, really hard, dog. Thanks, like, bro. Yeah, really yeah. nice, you know. That's pretty much all, Chris. Man, that must be fun making the beats, right? Like it's a good little process. Oh yeah, that's the cool thing. That's uh, that's what my, brought me and uh, Chris together as like a like a, a duo, if you will. Um, because we just have those sessions, basically, where I just go to his crib, we spark up, and we just make beats for fucking hours. Wow, yeah. yeah, he just makes beats for hours right in front of me. I'm like, oh, I like that sample. I like this. How about this? Ba -ba -ba -ba. I collaborate a little bit, but he's making the beats. But I collaborate a little bit with it, and it's like a, you know, it's a back and forth process that's really dope when you're making a song together. It's not like, oh, I'm gonna send you a bunch of beats. It's like, nah, these were handmade for me. You know? Yeah, yeah, and he'll be listening, and sometimes he'll be. You guys will share like the lyrics. You'll have the words. Yeah, yeah I'll be no, I'll write there as I go. Like oh, as he's so making it, the beat and like as he's making it, I'll be writing. Like that's how Miami bit. That's how I made Miami bit. Like it was funny. Miami bit was a good one because he actually showed me a beat, and I'm like, it's cool, but take off this. And he took it off, and I'm like, take off this, take off this, and before you know it, it's only boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. That's all it was. And I took everything out of the beat. Like, I took 10 elements out, and it was just that. I'm like, all right, let's build it from there now. Nice, and yeah. we made a whole new beat from that uh, loop. But yeah, you never know what you're going to like when you hear it. But that was the cool thing. Like, I basically get, you know, I had like a, a, a dope ass producer just tailor making my beats for the past couple of years. Yeah, it's got to be a nice little plus. It's like having uh, like a good coach or something, yeah, like a good yeah, partner, yeah. you know, like a but good But you team. get complacent, though. That's why I'm glad I'm making beats again, too, because I don't want everyone to be dependent on anybody especially if i could do it and, and and it's like a muscle i wanted to work on it you know again but um but yeah fucking god bless <laughs> christine you know what i mean like yeah, that's my that's yeah. my boy that's dope, big shout out to christine
I feel like that's huge, right? Like if you're gonna be making music, to have somebody that's like a like Absolutely. a yin and yang. You Absolutely. Feel me? Cause so many good like bro, how many times do you hear like a, a remix dog? Like mm-hmm. right now, Tupac, they, were, they have all these old school remix, and you have like an old beat, and they put in like an old song and a new yeah. beat, and you're like, oh it's shit. Like a whole, yeah, know? yeah. The producer artist uh, relationship is just invaluable. I mean, I have a great example of that. I mean, shout out to my boy Shadi who just uh, dropped an album. Oh, nice. Um, him and his producer have this amazing dynamic. Shadi and Tab 95, they have this incredible dynamic that Shadi's been making music for years and years and years, but it's never been as good as when he got with Tev. Like, Tev has just, like, opened up this new like thing in him, and it's kind of, like, exactly what he's always should have been doing kind of thing. And he's found the perfect producer for that. So it's always beautiful when you see that happen. And, me and, and it's funny because Shadi was like, I think you found your Tev. Like when I was talking about Chris, he's like, I think you found your Tev because it's like he brings out the best in me as far as an artist and things like that. And so, you guys can flow off each other, huh? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah it's very, the, the chemistry is incredible. So it's dope. Damn, that's how Dr. Dre we got started making his own beats. He was making beats, right? And then he also mm-hmm. got into rapping later on, right? Yeah. Well, he, he, he always writing. He used to write for he, a lot nah, of people. Nah, he never really wrote. Okay. Oh, other artists write for him. He never oh, no, it was um, Cube or whatever. Cube wrote for yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. He was a good writer. In the beginning, of. Cube wrote for him. Uh, I forget. What's the other guy's name? I always forget his name. I always forget his name, but then um, like almost every artist that he's worked with writes for him. Okay, Diddy's like that too. That's pretty popular. I didn't know that. I didn't realize that till like way late in the game. You know, like yeah. a lot of these people write for them, huh? It's yeah, pretty yeah. wild, yo. If they made the beat, they probably didn't write the. Ah, uh, okay. You know what I mean? Okay. I mean, not always. Don't 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 take my word on that quote for every time. But I'm saying like like the bigger guys, like especially in the older days, like like a Dre and a Puff, for example, like they were huge in you know like the late '90s and whatever, and they were rapping, but they didn't write any of that shit. Yeah, that's what I came up on. Like, yo, and Puff, that's what he used to just remake these just, and the remix and me remix. Doc, I think right? Doc is the one who used to write for for Dre. Ah, like. uh, okay, okay. Okay, nice, yo. Yeah, just came, his name just came out of nowhere. But yeah, DOC and Cube used to be the primary writers for Dre. Yeah, speaking of the old school, do you have any influences coming up? Like anybody that you were like, damn, I want to, I want to, uh, like that guys that made you or like some of your favorites coming up? Um, I mean, speaking of the West Coast, uh, Snoop, I loved Snoop growing up, like big time. I loved all, I loved a lot of West. I love Dre, I love these beats. I, mean, I love Tupac a lot. I mean, uh, I mean, you know, it's kind of generic, but I mean, if I had to pick, like, I mean, Eminem, of course, was a huge influence on me because, me you know, he was like, and it's like, not to bring race into it at all, but when you're a young Latino kid and you don't see anybody that looks like you doing what you love, you don't think you could do it. You know what I mean? But then, but then when you see, like, a, I'm not white, but when you see a guy that's not the same. Out of the box. Yeah, out of the box, something different. You're like, oh, okay, I can tell my story too. Like somebody else telling their story, and it's cool. And then Pun came heavy, and I was like, oh, yeah, like definitely. But still, he was more, because I'm not hood like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not A-Rod like, oh, I'm from the hood. <laughs> yeah, you can't be like, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. You can't be talking about like telling guns and yeah, shit. Yeah, like I know people who are bricks. really from the hood. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, you know, Union City, Jersey. I know motherfuckers who are really Union from the City, hood. Union City, dog. <laughs> yeah, my family was from there for real. And I have people from Jersey that are parts of Jersey that you don't want to go. Like, even yeah. if you're from there. So, like, I know what that is. I've, I've been to these places. And that's not Kendall. I mean, Kendall's got, Kendall's not easy. It's rough. It's street. Yeah, it's just, it's you, gotta, you just got to be street smart. I think you got to be street smart out here. It's you're a not weird. Yeah, you get yeah. suckered. That's it. It's a weird mix, right? Of yeah. Miami is like a weird mix of like, like you get the hoods and then the suburbs have this weird mix where like yeah. everybody coincides with each other. It's not exactly. like we're it's, not really segregated it's not through at neighborhoods all. at all. Like it's everybody a, fucks with each other here in Miami. Like going to like school, pot, yeah. like right? Like I have friends that live in complexes. I have friends that live in nice areas. hundred percent. And we all we be, all hang out. Yeah, yeah, it's not like like uh, one of the kids may be poor, and one of the kids may fucking be in a private school in a huge ass mansion. We just have the parties at his crib. Boom. That's it. Like, yes. That's yes. All, you know what I mean. But I've had all of that. We it's like I've had that exact group. That exact group where one of our boys. Goes to a private school, but we still chill. And his, I remember that in high school all day. His parents had a huge mansion in Pinecrest, and some of us living in a, in a apartment Southwest complex. And, some of us yeah, live, you know what I mean? Some of us live in a apartment complex next to Braddock, and the others live in a fucking decent little house with a pool. And it's like all ranges. It's all, and it's all in the same, yeah. Then they yeah. all go to the same school. We yo. all go to see either all yeah. of, most of us go to the same school, or we used to, and that's why we know the private school kid kind of thing. It's like that's that right. happens, bro. Like I remember that all day. God bless the private school kids. That's the best parties, the dog. Best you know? plugs, <laughs> best everything. Best, <laughs> yeah, best everything. everything. The best, plug. best, best, best drugs, best girls, <laughs> best, best venues. Budget parties, parties that were paid for, like expensive parties. Yeah, and you're like, whoa, this is another world like, here. And you're in high school, this, this you like realize a, there's levels to life. Exactly. At a young age, you know, you're like, oh, snap. And you think you're 
doing all right. When you're a come, public school kid and you're the cool kid in public school, and then you go to the private school and you see the cool kid in private school, you're like, oh, there's levels to this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's levels to this, yeah. Because when he's pulling up in a, in a Beamer at fucking senior chilling, high school, chilling. you're like, wait, time out. <laughs> what? And you're with a car, you're doing all right. And you have school. a car, yeah. You're, you're like, like oh, you're I, have, I have a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah, yeah. it. That's all I'm good. I'm fine with that. And then homie yeah. has. A car, a real, like better than my parents' car. Yeah, pulling, pulling up. Pulling up, you're like, yeah, yeah. That's when, that's when the levels come in. But that's that's here for sure. That's Miami, like all day in a nutshell. Yeah, when I do to, when I we do comedy when the and the coconut grove at the tours whenever you do yeah. comedy, you have like a good mix there, and you be seeing the young um kids. You're like, Damn, now you have my number. Fitted, you know? Always let me know when you're gonna go there because I lived around the corner. Oh, okay, for sure, course. bro. Yeah, yeah, we're always there every Thursday night. It's Thursdays. Okay, yeah, yeah. Cool. Thursdays is the comedy night. That's there, the one yeah. I went up. I actually went up a few times. No went, way, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Polly some... convinced me to go ah! up and do a little stand up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You did like the five minutes then. I did five. I've done three fives. Oh yeah, shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's in you, and you like to write too. Yeah, dog. yeah. I'm, so a, you're I'm an actor. I'm, yeah. I, I'm, oh, that's I, right. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, and I acted first. That's the first thing I did. I did one was like six. I have six. I started acting early. No way! Yeah, How'd you get into yeah. that, dog? I mean, I just, I was like the guy. I was doing impressions. I was doing beatboxing as a kid. You know what I mean? So they put me in it. I get for them. It was a babysitter. I don't think they cared. <laughs> To yeah. be honest, they're like, yo, just get the fuck out of my hair. <laughs> go go to acting classes. Yeah, that'll be great for them, you know. Yeah, yeah. So they had the and they had the budget at the time. So I was doing that, but then when like they got divorced, that those kind of priorities left. So I stopped doing it. Uh, and then when I started rapping more and like you know later, I meet a lot of directors and they like my look and be like, I have, actually I do act and they're like what? So I got a lot of opportunities and it came full circle, yo. Exactly. You were doing that mad young, had no idea. No idea, yeah. But and but the experience it gave me, I never lost because I've always loved it. And you've always, so you've always been kind of like a performer. You had like a good personality. Like when you were a kid, you must have like had something, right? Because they're gonna, I'm, they're not gonna yeah. grab any regular kid. No, nah, right? I've, I've always, I've just, I've, I've been, I enjoy it. I just, I'm, a, I'm a, I naturally enjoy doing it. Like I love it. Like I love it. I yeah, like love, when the spotlight's on you, you, you like the spotlight. Like yeah, you enjoy like even it, like fighting. Like yeah, I've, I've, I've competed in fighting, and it was, just, it feels, it feels the same. You what know? did you do in fighting? But I was a kid. This is when I was a kid. I was a Taekwondo. As a kid. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. I've trained throughout my whole life. I love it. I love it. That's why I respect you because I love the multifaceted aspects of things. I love it. I'm a big. MMA fan and big comedy fan. Oh hell like, yeah, that's both. awesome! I'm in your range, dog. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, yeah, I, I got to get. I love Gaffecito. Like, hey, Gaffecito. let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I was like, yeah, we got. I got to link up with this guy because he's right there. Yeah, right there. Yeah, dog. For sure. and they're all very similar. We're like, it's different, right? Like martial arts and entertainment and comedy and the music industry, but. But it's it is the same it is. hustle bustle. Like everything you were saying before, like being producing your own content mm -hmm. and like putting stuff out and marketing yourself. It, yeah, it's like definitely we're all, we're within artists, that role, yeah. mixed martial artists, you know, like you're just expressing yourself in a different way. Exactly. It's it's art, but it's also like a skill. It's also something you have to train for a long fucking time at and you get you gotta get those ten thousand hours in for real. And you gotta suck for a while. You gotta suck for a while. And these are three things that is very and humiliating. All three of those things. And humiliating. And not humiliating. Oh, yeah. Humbling, humbling. Absolutely. Like but it, can, it can be humiliating. It can be. Yeah, you can fucking bomb. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Bomb, get knocked out. You can lose. You know, And mm -hmm. you know, to get good at either of those, you got to bomb a lot you and you got to lose a lot. You have to. That's and I'm sure. The, it's part of the path. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Straight up. It's that path of the artist where like. Mm hmm it's crazy, right? Cause it's, it's a crazy path. And if you tell a normal person that will just wants to go to school and get their career and they're like, yo, well, you can just do this and make a little bit of money and be chilling. And, yeah. and, but only like the sickos understand, dog. We love that chase, yeah, bro. There's something bro. crazy about it, you know? Nah, it's just like about that, that thing you know you can do kind of thing. I think that's what it is for me. Yeah. I don't think so much about like, Oh, one day I'm gonna have a man, you know, I'm the mansion and a dope car and all this bullshit. That's not. It's not about that. It's like I have to do this. It's because what I'm good at, what I like to do. So I might as well just do it to my fullest extent. You know what I mean? However that, however that cookie crumbles. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's like I have to do it. I have to. You know? It's like inside of you. you yeah. Know? It's like I have no, like, it's like if I try to do something practical, you know, like go work as a union job or some shit, I would fucking go crazy. I'd be miserable. I wouldn't be the person I am. You know I mean? wouldn't be, bro. And I wonder how many people are doing that. Like, yeah, I, and I've tried many, a few times, you know? Bro, there's probably a lot. In my 20s, I've tried a couple times to go straight. <laughs> oh, you have. You have. Bro, in my, 20s, in my 20s, a couple times, bro, I did, like, I tried to do real estate. I tried to do some things. And I was just like, this, this is not me, bro. This is just not me. I can't do this. This is not. I'm, I'm miserable. Yeah. Miserable as a human.
That's, bro, I was working at, I had a union job. I was working at, that was like my last real job, you know? And then I quit that. I started working at a restaurant because when I was training and getting yeah. serious with my training, I was like, damn, as a yeah, waiter. Yeah, you need that. I did restaurants for a yeah, while, Yeah, because that's a good job where if you have another career, that's a, it's a good side job. Because you make, you can make enough money hustle, bustling. Absolutely. In five, five six weekends, hours, yes. bro. And you can make your fucking, you can make a nice daily, at least 150 bucks. Yeah, yeah, you bucks. work a double and you grind. Yeah, you work a double, you make two bucks, boom, Easy. you're good. At a, shitty, at a shitty little restaurant, you'd even go to better and better. You're going yeah, three, five hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, for sure. You can have a, a good night where like, that's what mm -hmm. I would do. I would just train mad hard Monday through Thursday, like every day, like a professional. Yeah. And then Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, just work doubles in the in three days, make and that's five it. days worth of work. You exactly. know what I'm saying? But yeah, I always tell people, I always tell my students, I'm training now. And I tell my students like, yo, get a job in a restaurant. You can train in the morning. You Quick. can train before you go to your night shift. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You pay rent, you pay bills, you have a little money extra. Yeah, for sure. And especially if you train that much, those jobs are great. Because yes. what, what kills those jobs is free time. Because you, you get cash every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. What, that's what killed me. I didn't have guidance and I was younger when I was making money and I was doing real good. Because yeah. you go home with two, three hundred bucks and you don't want to go home. And you blow it, dog. And you you watch, you watch sit there, you've been watching people drink and party all day. And then and when you then, get out, you just want to go and out, And there's dog. three hot girls that work with you that want to tell you when you do want to go drink. Yeah, that's what I was telling my boy. That used to be the glitch in the system. Like, Bro. living in Miami, like, if you work in a restaurant, you can you you can hang out with a lot of nice chicks. Yeah. A lot of all the hot girls you work with, you know? Yeah. You don't even have to go anywhere. They're there for you. They're there. Embedded. And they and get to know you, so you don't even have to spit game. They yeah, because right, they, they don't want to go like meet new dudes. They're like, yeah. they already met you. Like, all right, cool. Like, we're good here. Like, we just go drink with this guy. He's cool. And that's it, dude. And it's like every night in a restaurant. You bartend, you rest. Yeah, and every restaurant is like the same dynamic of people. You got like the hot hostess. You got the bartender everybody wants to get with. You got the one waiter that everybody, you know, it's 100%. like. 100%. If it's a good every... restaurant, it's the same <laughs> dynamic, you know. And the better the restaurant, the hotter hot the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dog. Well, some, some fine dining, they care more about the service. So I will say that. That's true. Maybe Miami a little less, but um, I have some friends that work still work fine dining. One of my boys, uh, shout out to Juan, he's the head bartender at uh, Fountain Blue. Oh, uh, we started with him in Carabas, but he kept going up. You know? But he's, up. he's nasty with the. You know oh what yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. The top drinks, drink, the, the, not the, the cocktail, yeah, cocktail yeah, shit. Yeah, he's like a beast with it, you know. Yeah, this is up. I, I used walked to, to a bar with him, and he's like. He starts asking about all the liquors and shit. Starts seeing how they shake, you know. I bartended at Fridays, and they make you do that. Yo, Friday is which one? The one in um Dolphin. The one oh, Dolphin, Dolphin and the Falls. Actually. Oh, okay. I was gonna say my boy worked at the both. one in the Falls, dog. Yeah, oh, I worked wow. at both. Oh, snap. Bartending at the bar was pretty good there. I had yeah. a friend bartending. We're making bread, dog. Oh, yeah, I was doing good. I want is Friday still around? Are they still open? I, bro, I have, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still around. The restaurant is still around. Yeah, for right? Sure. For sure. For hundred percent. My boy works at the I still got a friend that works at the one in Dolphin. Oh, okay, okay. Dolphins yeah. gotta be crazy. That one's gotta be a little rowdy, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And a lot of Europeans sure. and shit, like yeah. travelers. Everything, with the everything there. I, that's the first Fridays I worked at. Yeah. Oh snap! Yeah. yeah, the one in Briar Bay, the one in the fall is probably a little nicer, you know. Mm, nicer? I mean, you know what it is? Nice. It's it's. I like it because it's like classic Fridays build with the little like. Has like a phone booth and like a walk around st stairway, like all the other Fridays I've been to, and like in the across the country I've looked like. So that's why I liked it. It had a cool old school feel to it. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, the restaurant business. You build a lot of character, is, dog. Yeah, working in the restaurant I, did, I was in the business for a while, man. But it was cool. Like I, I love it because it humbles you. It humbles the fuck out of you. It and really yeah, does. yeah, and you be like, you're gonna automatically be nice, like in life, dog. Yeah. In general. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's good karma too, dog. I learned now. Whenever I go out, that's the only bad thing is now. Now I'm, I'm, I'm always, I always over tip wherever I go. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's yeah. one thing you got to stay true to your cause. One hundred percent. You, <laughs> you got to stay on the team. I, 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 I do get bitter sometimes. I do get upset. I do like I, that's the one thing that 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 I don't like. That it's like the service industry kind of jaded me because now you know what it takes. Oh man, and you know it's when people down, suck. Right? You know when people Yo, suck. It's gone down in Miami, bro. bro. Big time. I just moved back. I think big after time. the COVID, I feel like everybody just lost their. Nobody cares. Every restaurant I go to is just the worst. I was like these young kids with blue so hair, and bad. I want to punch them in the nose. I'm like, you so, little punk, dog. I used to run, I would run circles yo, around you when I was like, 20 yo, years old. Yo, you could be making so much. I, th I just think to them, yo, you could be making so much money right now, and you're such, you're wasting your your time here. Like, it's crazy. Like, like if you're gonna be here, do the good, the right job, so you can make the real money you should be making here. Because right now you're gonna be making 10 percent of this fucking table because you suck. Yeah, yeah. Because you for suck. Real, yeah, yeah. 100%. You're averaging 10 percent on all your tables. You could be averaging 25 percent, 20 percent easy if you just put a little effort dog that's the thing that kills me yeah uh i heard like in other states they pay pretty good like and i don't know what they pay now i remember when i used to work as a waiter it was like four dollar 25 cents right oh, so like trash. it's nothing so you just make on your tips you yeah know? it has to be on yeah 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 the hourly now i think it's i think it's up though i think it's like, i think it's better now i think like you get 15 bucks an hour or yeah i think you get your hourly and i think you get
Yeah. We were getting three fifty an hour. Yeah, like, was, I remember it went up to four dollars. I was like a yeah. big deal where you can get like exactly. you know, that was, was a like, big deal. It was like two thirty five for a while. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, was like, some, yo, we're getting four thirty. Yeah, we're going <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's like, yo, rich. Yeah, like, <laughs> let me get that loan. Yeah, you get like a hundred bucks every two weeks. One hundred percent. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Exactly. But man. but yeah, man, that, that you're bringing up bad memories about the service industry. It's crazy. So when did you know that? Like, all right, this is gonna like. When did you know you can do like this? Is this your going like? Oh um, my guess. Full board. Uh, I just had to like make the decision. It was it was it was all it was like kind of when I went solo. When I went solo, and I was like, if this is really gonna work, I gotta put, you know, I gotta put more into it. I can't put this part time sh- shit. Like I can't have these regular jobs and then put this little part time energy and expect to get it done. And you know, I was right because I wouldn't have got any of the gigs. Most of the gigs that I got, I wouldn't have got them if I would have been if I would have had a job. Half assing maybe. Yeah, they would have felt half assing. Opportunities would have been. No, they would have been in a place that I wouldn't have been able to accept the opportunities because of a job. Yes. Because of a schedule. I could no, I'm not available these days. <laughs> like I have to ask permission to get those days off. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And a lot of these jobs are last minute. A lot of these jobs and these last minute jobs, you show up, you do good, those those lead to huge big opportunities. Like that's happened to me so many times where I've gone and done something for free. And then I get a lead in the film because of it. You know what I mean? Like, or straight up, or the guy directs my video for free because I went and I kicked ass in his job for for cheap. It's like, bro, like you have no idea. It's just being in the opportunity, just being available to be in the place when you need to be. Yeah, can open up so many doors, and I wouldn't have been able to do those if I had some nine to five job or had to ask permission to go to this thing or things like that. I wouldn't have been able to do them. Period. Point blank. Like you almost had to burn your ships, you know. You ever heard that saying, like, burn your boats? You know, like they yeah. go to war and then they burn their boats and mm-hmm. they have to win or whatever, you know. Yeah, basically, it was just like I had to take the chance. That's that was it. That was like that was it. I had to bet on myself and take the chance, and give myself the opportunity to get other opportunities, basically. Yeah, and invest in yourself. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. So I would say, yeah, when I went solo about ten years ago, so I haven't had a, like a regular job since then. Nice. I was gonna ask you. Yes, yeah, so that's it. You're just you're producing, yeah. making music. Yeah, doing I'm doing all that. I mean, I edit. I edit films. I've gotten like nominated for a couple things for editing. Oh no way! I gotta yeah. check. Oh, that's awesome, bro. Editing. Yeah. I'm learning now with the podcast. Yeah, for it's sure. It's another a good world. Way. It's a nice crash course. Oh my yeah. gosh, I could probably pick your brain. Yeah, yeah I, oh, I got a new tutor now. I'm hitting you up every night. Yo, show this damn video, yeah. bro. Look. I mean, honestly, the best way, the way I learned at least, because I'm a one-on-one guy. Yeah. So I would just hire the directors that I liked. You know what I mean? And then I would just sit with them. And not be annoying. There you go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. You sit with them, not be annoying, kind of be as quiet as possible, you know, to just let them work. And then when you have a question, just choose your spots. You know what I mean? Make sure you listen to every fucking syllable they say and just shut the fuck up again and let them work and just watch. Soak them as much as I could. And honestly, that's how I became an editor. And then, like, whenever I have, you know, point problems, if I can't Google it, I ask them personally again. And But that's it. And now, just through taking everything I learned from them, all the different techniques I learned from like three or four guys. Nice. It's man. like I went to school. Yeah, and then, yo, when you edit, and when you edit, like, um, you're doing it on the computer, just like using programs or like yeah, Adobe I use, Pro, or like how do you edit yeah, big yeah. films? Yeah, I like use Premiere. Some, I use Premiere. Premiere. Yeah, Premiere. Oh, nice, Easy peasy. Damn, how'd you get into that? How did you get into editing films? Like just through the through um, network, through, through network, just being suggested, just being referred. Do you do your own music video? Like, have you done I've your own music videos? I've edited a bunch of my own videos. Wow. Yeah. How does that work? How does the process work for starting a video? Like, you got to come up with all that cash yourself? or do Yeah. You... Yeah. I got lucky in my past few videos. I mean, I've, I've developed, like I said, I've developed relationships with a bunch of directors. So that I get I get love. I get shown a lot of love. I'm not going to lie, man. But the shit is like, but I don't ask for it. That's, that's kind of why I think I get it. Because you can't be out here like, please help me, please help me. Yeah. It's more like... Just work, man. Just go out there and work. And when people respect it and they fuck with your work, excuse me for cursing so much. Nah, it's all right. We're not, uh, yeah, we're yeah, chilling. Yeah. <laughs> no, the other day I was on the radio and I cursed and I was like, oh, oh my God. You can't, God. on the radio you can't, right? I know. Do um, they blur it? Are they like ahead of time? I'm or? hoping that they had like some delay because if not, I'm going to get fined like 10 grand. No way. Yeah. Fine for real. Yeah. FCC fine. I might get fined. I'm, I'm just hoping because they warned me and everything. I'm just hoping that, you know, they didn't catch it. There wasn't a lot of people listening. We'll see what happens. Let's hope. <laughs> but yeah. They warned you before. They warned me. I didn't sign anything though. So technically, and there's no, there's no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what were you on the radio for? What was it at? Yeah. So we might have to edit this part. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know. All of a sudden you get a treat like, yeah, like, well, we like didn't know. We saw him on this podcast. Is <laughs> oh, for sure. They follow the Honey Badge uh, Rock. Facts. Facts. <laughs> 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 nah, but um, 
But yeah, what were we talking about that I was talking about? That's on Marcus. With the editing that you're making your own. Uh, Got it. So. Finding your peoples and then a lot of times just. I've developed a lot of relationships with these guys and I'm, and I'm, and I'm lucky, man. So if like I've worked hard and I just kind of show them what I'm working on, they're like, oh, I want to shoot that. I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's dope. So but I still times, I come up I come up with the budgets for a, for a few like for like for Capacito I came up with with a decent little budget for that and I just got lucky that jokes was wanted to do it. I still broke them up a little something, but it's not as great. <laughs> like you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah. jokes is a is an established director. You know what I mean? Nice. Like I think the video he did before that I had to do something with I think he worked on a two chains video or something like that. Oh wow! You dope, know what I mean? Bro. So then he's like doing that and then he's doing mine. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> so it's like I'm just I'm lucky, man. I'm I'm lucky in that in that way. Like. I'm I've developed some really cool relationships with some really amazing and talented people. Yeah, you so met some good dudes along yeah. the way, huh? Oh yeah, so they helped me out a lot, man. So yeah. How, when the um, what was your like your first video to pop off? You remember like your first <laughs> pop off? I mean, pop off. Like, do you have like what was your? Do you have I, a favorite video? I or? mean, I would say the Cafecito video is probably one of my more successful videos. Nice, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cafecito is one of my more popular songs, so I would say that one. How long does it take to like shoot like a four minute video? Like, I a, mean, like we a, shot we we shot that in a day. Uh, just from boom boom. No, nah, but a, a full day, on. full day, about three or four scenes. You know what I mean? And yeah, three or four scenes plus. So it was a, it was a full production. I mean, I I rented the place for like two three days, two oh, two man. days and stuff. You know. Yeah, and then you release it. You release all that on your channel, right? Like you got your YouTube channel. Yeah, just my channel. Spotify, uh, yeah, SoundCloud. Yeah, yeah. Do you get do you get like monetized through Spotify through your music and stuff or yeah. like um, yeah, 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 yeah like sure. through plays or whatnot? You make I got a deal with streams, them or? through streams. No, it's just you know. Regular, just through, uh, who is it, DistroKid. I'm okay. working with DistroKid right now, so I for all my releases. I might change to United Masters, I'm, so, I'm not sure yet, but still, it's pretty much the same thing. You know, they they, they don't pay amazing, but it's it's more about, like, developing the fan base and just having your shit accessible. But yeah, have, having people be able to reach you everywhere, right? Mm -hmm, exactly. Do you see your demographic? Do you, or have you seen your demographic of fans? Like, have you traveled? Uh, yeah. You traveled the state to do uh, tours and stuff? I did a tour with Mayday. Nice, um, yeah. I don't know if you ever heard of them. They're from here. They have, uh, you know, um, Crazy Hood. You know Crazy Hood Productions now. Um, probably not. You should. No. You know Drink Champs. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know Drink, drink Champs. Champs. Okay. So yeah, EFN. Yeah. EFN. Uh -huh. yeah, that's Crazy Hood Productions. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. That's yes, yes, yes. I know exactly. What you're and they're about. from Kendall. So yes. you should definitely you should be familiar you should be familiar Yo, with I him. think I saw I think I saw him in um I saw him in a restaurant and I saw him around here one day. Yeah, yeah, like, oh, yeah. Shit, yeah, yeah. He's Kendall, he's Kendall all day. <laughs> so uh, he managed the group called Mayday. Oh, okay, or he okay, co-managed okay. the group called Mayday or whatever, and I toured with them. Oh, how's it like going on tour? Though? It, was, it was amazing. It was a lot on of fun. On a bus or like um, yeah, yeah. It was a big, like a big band. That's like it's like rock star lifestyle when you yeah, guys are yeah, on the yeah. bus cruising like yeah yeah I mean I, mean, I was in that rock star it was uh, <laughs> it was uh, <laughs> it was grind mode man you know yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it's it's part of it dog you know it's it's not so glamorous it sounds like but it was but it was fun man it was a lot of fun you sleep on the bus I mean no nah, when we travel yeah we we have hotels everywhere we go yeah but um but yeah but I mean fuck yeah we leave, we people? leave early enough we leave late enough for sure we're passing out a little bit on that bus we, we all did our fair share of sleeping on that bus and you're going to different venues every night huh like yeah every other night every two nights every song it was, yeah it was nice damn how do you feel after a show you have crazy energy after the show like you oh yeah like, the adrenaline's what does the it roof, feel like when you get sure. nervous before or like are you no, more like it's excited? more like I just want to do it yeah it's not it's 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 like anxious to do it it's not about getting nervous it's like let's get it done let's do this it's not about like oh my god what am I gonna mess up it's never that Thankfully, yeah. thankfully, I don't get that kind of energy. I think it's because you know I've been doing like stage stuff since I'm a kid, so like I feel more alive. I feel more comfortable there. Yeah, for sure, you know? man. You do freestyles and stuff like this. Like, I mean, I've, I freestyle from time to time. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah for sure. Battles and shit, you know. Like. When I was, I mean, that's how I started. That's how I got confidence in rapping. You know, I'd go to parties and like battle the guys that rapped, and then I'd beat them. And I'd be like, ah, oh, okay, cool, man, I can do this. You know, damn. I mean? And you got songs too, bro. Like, um, um, you and you can sing. You got a pretty good voice, bro. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I try a little bit. You know, you, I try to leave it to the professionals, but I dabble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like you could just realize how do you, like how do you you just you practice and you feel like oh it sounds pretty good. You know, like do you, do, do you talk to somebody? I mean, you should hit vocals. And I mean, stuff? I've been singing since I'm a kid. I used to be in choir and all that stuff yeah, when I was as a, as a youngster. You know what I mean? But uh, I kind of like did I I didn't pay attention to it as much so it's like I I I think if I got some le lessons again and like uh, really went in I could probably do something more with it but for now like I'm I'm cool with where I'm at with it and then like if I have something that I think really needs to be sung I got the guys for that you know I yeah. got the I got the like I got, I got a hell of a network for that but you know there's sometimes that I want to sing it too so I'm probably gonna get back into lessons eventually oh that's dope man. yeah yeah I like it I I do enjoy singing it's fun. 
Man, so you done stand up, bro? That's a little crazy. bit, a little bit. Yeah. How was your set? How was the set? You enjoyed it? I'm like, not gonna lie, bro. I actually got laughs. Got I couldn't believe it. Yeah, Ooh, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I came because she put me on the spot. I'm like, a pressure player, so Polly kind of dared me because it was an open mic at Taurus. Yeah. And, oh no, it wasn't a Taurus. The first one, the first one she convinced me to do was like was North Miami Beach, I think, someplace in North Miami Beach, and I just went randomly just to go show her love. She's like, oh, it's an open mic too. I'm like, oh, I've always wanted to. She's like. Oh, you what? You always want to do it? You do. You got to do it. You got to do it. Pussy, yes. you got to do it, bitch. You got to pussy. <laughs> no, I'm signing up. I'm signing up. I'm signing up. I'm, signing up. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? So right there in the spot, I started trying to think of, you know, things to say and shit like that. So like I thought of, I thought of something fun, decent, you know what I mean? That, that I thought was funny enough, you know? And, uh, and I got laughs and I couldn't believe it. So then I did another one and I thought of some more stuff like on the spot. And then I said that same one again and it got laughs again. Oh, there so you I was go. like, oh shit, okay. Yeah, a little weapon. Yeah, a little bit. Like, like, a, like a half little closer for like a five, you know what I mean? For yeah. Like a, like a little short set. So um, then I did another one. Again, wasn't planning to. It was my friend who actually invited me to watch him do open mic. And we go. And then, bro, as soon as I get in there, I just like see like material like everywhere. And I'm like, bro. And I'm, he, he was a dude. And he was like, I, I, I don't know if he was nervous or what. But I was like, I could see like, I don't know, he was thinking a lot. You could see he was pensive. And I'm like, all right. Let's go. Let's, let's go outside real quick. We go outside to smoke. And I'm like, yo, say this, 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 and this. <laughs> and I'm like, I had it ready. And he's like, you go say that shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm like, I'm trying to give him material. He's like, nah, bro, you go up there and say that. That's funny. I'm like, all right, fuck it. I'm like, you know what? Let me go do it. And it'll, maybe it'll make him more you know, comfortable to do yeah, it too, yeah, to jump sure. on. It's like, I'll do it first. Like, you know what I mean? And he goes, let me jump on. So I'm like, all right, fuck it. Let me do it. So I went in there and I just started, <laughs> I'll never forget it. It was this place called the Elk Lodge in Kendall. It's uh, <laughs> it's like on Sunset in like 107. Point. I know the Elks. I've been there. The dog. Elk Lodge. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, Marty probably ran in that. Oh my God. The gosh. super old dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Marty, the glass yeah, of the ball old Jewish guy. Yeah. I hate to say it, but that's exactly like the old Jewish dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Old Marty, dog. It was old Marty that was uh, <laughs> setting it up. And he had met my boy somewhere and told him to come. And yeah, he was like, dog. come through. So that's how I found out about it, and I ended up just going because I was I had like it's my boy, so I had lunch with him earlier that day. And he told me about it. I'm like, ah, let's do it, let's go tonight. So we go, <laughs> and the first, bro, I'm like the first thing I'm like, dude, I lived in Kendall my whole life, I've never heard of this place. So I'm like, bro, what can I do with that? So the first thing I do when I go in there, and it's like it's the Elk Lodge, bro. Like, bro, this is like people I'm yeah. I've never the Elk seen Lodge, before, the first bro. thing you're gonna think of is a bunch of rich white dudes like in an elite club <laughs> like smoking cigars and shit. Like, that's the first elk lodge that's all i think of elite white club like so i'm like all right well, how can i play with this so the first thing i say is like guys i gotta tell you i've been living in kendall most of my life you know going on you know 20 plus years now and um i've never heard of this place and i'm talking we're down, down the street so let's let's give it up for the whites and their secrets <laughs> ladies <laughs> and gentlemen let's give it for the whites and keeping their secrets and i got a hell of a laugh so i just said i said fuck it i kept diving into it i'm like all right so i i gotta i i'm still i'm sorry to make a thing of this but i don't know how you guys did this i see you got flat screen tvs set up all the way up so, so for sure some latinos installed those did they have to sign ndas <laughs> did they not tell you okay so all right, all right so it's thursday it's thursday comedy all right so what is it what is it monday tuesday wednesday friday clan meeting thursday comedy <laughs> Is that how we're, is that the schedule? I just want to make sure. You know, I just hit them. I just kept hitting them, hitting them. And bro, they were they were digging it. Oh, <laughs> they're, that's they're, crazy. They were dog. loving it. They were loving it, man. I just so it's like that's I just hadn't I was having fun with it. You yeah, know that's I mean? awesome, bro. Yeah. And you so, get the experience from getting on stage, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, performing so that's, all the time. That's so what I'm saying. So I've been I've been on stage so for so long. It's like it's really just I just need the material. If I'm confident in the material, I'll I'll go up there for as long as yeah <laughs> that's what it is just about being prepared you know yeah a lot of times people go up there and then if they don't have nothing prepared time goes slow Yo, my you know? god if you got, kidding me and sometimes they don't laugh so you gotta be ready to keep it going yeah you gotta you have know? yeah so that's why i had the, i had just had those things that i thought of on the spot so i was like pop 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 and as soon as that got stale i went to that one closer joke that i was telling it's you perfect, about and it's like working out I can't believe you performed at the Elk. That's all the plays. That's a wild spot, dog. Yeah, so Martin's yeah. got to find you and be like, he's got to trick you in the beginning. We don't know nothing about comedy. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah, he, I like, saw him do that to a few people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. I saw that. Oh, man. That's hilarious. Yeah, dog. I'm a year in now in comedy. You oh, know what nice, I'm saying? man. Nice. So it's fun. Nice I like uh, delving into the arts, you know, like learning something new. So but it's yeah, great, man. man. And stand up's, stand up's a lot of fun, bro. It's just a lot of fun. It's a good community, too. Like the people are really cool. I, like, yeah, I really like the community. It's fun, dog. And everybody's intertwined, bro. I'm meeting a lot of interesting people. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, absolutely. You so definitely meet good, some bro. characters. You definitely meet some cool characters. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, dog. Yeah, man. 
Especially at the open mic, at the level that I'm at right now, it's like, whew, yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, I don't know who the <laughs> fuck told me some of these people to do this. You know? <laughs> oh yeah, it's tough. I'm actually gonna start booking comedy shows. No way. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, for sure. As a, promo- a as a promoter, I have a, a really dope venue, and I have a couple things I'm working with. I just, oh man, I just booked Caballo for something. Oh and nice, I'm, bro. I'm, I'm talking. I'm gonna talk to a few dope ones next. So. Oh, that's good to know, man. Some headliners, yeah. And if, oh, that's and awesome. And if, if you're working with people that put together shows, let me know so we can do maybe one of you guys' showcases there. And yeah, yeah. Really, Definitely, yeah, bro. We'll, 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 we'll talk after. I'm hosting a few mics now and stuff like this. I host. A sh- I'm hosting a show tomorrow in uh, Exit One, yo. Okay. Da- down south. And, uh, okay. Well, and well, give Homestead. me the, give me that far, dog. Oh, Homestead. Ooh. So maybe maybe Exit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe Exit. Exit One. one oh, for real, for real. Baby. So Florida City vibes. Yeah, but they need it, yo. Yeah, it's yeah, poor, yeah. Poor they people need out it there, dog. Sure. You know what I'm saying? It's gotta, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they need something. They don't see nothing out there, dog. They need to smile up there. Yeah, it's down there. Boondocks for real, bro. Yeah. After you pass that one exit, after you pass the old color, you just start driving. You're I like, think Yo, all when's I, the next exit? You all think I've you done there lost, is dog. gas. Like, I probably got gas there, and that's it. That's all I've done in that area. Like, yeah, <laughs> just on the way to the, to the yeah, keys. To the keys, that's it. They got the Cracker Barrel, yo. They the Cracker Barrel's crack, fire. They do have the Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel holds up, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a nice They little, have a Red Lobster there, I think. That's a nice little Sunday trip, yo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have a couple things there. Yeah, fuck the Red Lobster. I'm allergic to shark. Or is it Red stock. Lobster or is it Long John Silver? Whatever is the drive through one. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Probably Long John's. Yeah, I remember like. that back in the day. We used to do that right before the keys. I don't know. Mexican food, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you're, are you Cuban? You're Cuban descent, dog? I'm Cuban and Peruvian. Oh, no way, dog. Yeah, me yeah, too, yeah. bro. Well, same mix? Yeah, Peruvian, dog. My dad's oh, Cuban nice. and my mom's Peruvian. Oh, that's hilarious. Me too. Same mix. Are you saying? Dad's Cuban, mom's Peruvian. That's funny, bro. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Dog. Yeah, 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 bro. My mom's from Lima, bro. Mine too. So, um, Mine too. My mom's yeah, from Lima bro, as well. Yeah, bro. The exact same mix. Same mix. That's I think funny. Mazadal, Jorge Mazadal is the same mix too, bro. I found I out. I think yo. so. I think so. There's a lot of Peruvian Cubans, bro. Yeah, there's a few. Mertz, Jose Mertz is like that. Oh, the no artist, way, dog. The artist, Jose yeah. Mertz is that. Yeah. Yo, I was doing uh yeah, I was doing crowd work the other day. I was doing coming the other day and I was talking to some people, where are you from? They go like same thing, Peru and Cuba. I was like, Oh yeah, me too. That's crazy. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a it's an awesome mix. Yo, you ever been to Peru? Yes. Yo, Peru's dope, right? I haven't been to Cuba, but I've been to Peru. Yeah, I've never been to Cuba either. Yeah. And I went to Peru as a kid, though. I've never been as an adult. Yeah, I wanna go as an adult. I wanna I wanna go on an ayahuasca trip over there. Yes, me too, yeah, dog. That's the move. Yo, have you ever done ayahuasca? Nah, or I've like done all the other stuff. DMT? <laughs> yeah, DMT? Yeah. yeah, but I wanna do I I, to, I think I have to do it better. I didn't really get lost. Me too. Me too, dog. The DMT. It's like, hard to take. It's really dog. hard to you take. You gotta let go. Yeah, I didn't, yeah let go. I didn't let go. I was stuck in no man's I was land too tight. Like ten, I, me too, I dog. I was too tight. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. I think I like I had to do a little more. Like I think I did like three like, three pulls of it, and I think yeah. I should have done like six. Yeah, you know what it is, dog. I hit it off of like a, a pipe with some weed. I just did it by itself. You gotta do like a crack pipe. I heard. You yeah, you saying? gotta do a dolo by itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And but yeah, and I did that. I did a dolo, but I don't know. I don't think I did enough. I think I just like I underestimated my my tolerance or whatever the fuck you'd imagine what you were going to call it. But it, I was like, you do, do, do three, that's it. I'm like, I did three. I was like, I saw a little bit when I closed my eyes, but I didn't get lost. Like, I know the symptoms. This is not it. Yeah, me too, dog. I didn't go like, shoot. I heard that there's, a, there's an amount where you take it where you just, where yeah, you just go. Yeah, where it's like you're there and you see, you don't see what's in front of you. Yes, because it's yes. like the veil has been pulled over. And yeah, it's like, that's, dog. Yeah, I've that's, seen videos of that. I'm like, that didn't happen to me. Me too. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's not what happened. So I need more. <laughs> that's the one that i want to do though yeah bro um, i've done heavy mushrooms like hot. i've gone deep oh, yeah. on mushrooms oh me too yeah i've gone real deep i've gone seven grams plus Ooh, seven damn dog yeah. i don't know how that's a lot yeah seven's yeah duh, seven's the dark side of the moon bro it's a lot ego death and everything like i didn't i didn't go no not that far but um i have, I have a little bit of this a little bit of that uh that's like the farthest i've been before it's like whoa but it's like i'm still there completely i remember 100 percent but yeah, I've gone far. I've gone far with that. Yeah, with the mushrooms, I've gone far. But yeah, same thing, though. I want to go to ayahuasca. I want to do it proper. Like, I want to do like a 30 day vegan diet, all this shit. Yeah, you know? I'm down, I'm with, down like, for focus. the 72 hour fast before. Yes. Like, yeah, the, the fast day. too, bro. Yeah, because I kind of intermittent. I, inter- I, I fast already, intermittent fast. You know what I mean? But especially when you do that and then you hit a 24 hour or a 48, pff, you're, oh my you're God. empty, boy. And then it's going to go straight to you. I think I did a, a, off of fast. I, I watched Avatar. I, was it Avatar? Was it Avatar or Black? Oh, it was Black Panther. Black oh, Panther nice. on some shrooms off of, off a of fast. Woo, oh. boy. The last one that came out. The last one. The Wakanda Forever joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Um, you haven't seen it? No, 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 Are no. you into those movies or whatever? A little bit. Nah, not too much. But the first Black Panther I liked. Yeah, yeah. I don't like... Um, I think Marvel movies are hit or miss 
for me. Mar- Marvel, Marvel, yeah. Marvel I don't even watch too many Marvel movies, It's bro. just that the thing is that that's like some of the only high quality level filmmaking. Like high level it's filmmaking. All they make, dog. That's what I mean. It's but crazy. that's like the, the biggest high level mil- films these days are those films. So I was like, I got to watch all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if it's like I know what's going to happen. Even if it's like I got to watch all of them because these are the highest level filmmaking that's happening. Right? This is it. This like is it. With the, oh, that's what okay. we got. You're looking at the art. You're looking I'm looking at, at complete. As a complete art form, This these are the highest level films that are being made. Period. Right now. Period. That's it. There's no. There's no. There's no. So comparison. you watch the Avengers? Do you like the Avengers End Game and all that one? Oh my God, that shit was amazing. That one's legit. Infinity right? War. Infinity yeah, War. None of these. Oh, Infinity. That's Captain. Captain no, Infinity America, War or? is is. Remember, like uh, that shit was two of them. Okay. There was the Avengers Infinity War and then End Game. Okay. 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 So okay. it was like a part two, part one, and part two. Yeah. So the first one with Thanos. The first one with Thanos is there like the whole time. That's Infinity War. You have to watch them all. Or I can watch Infinity War and then. I mean, you think I watch this movie? I'll be lost, right? Yeah. I've watched a few, and I'm like, you. Won't, I, I wouldn't say lost, lost, but a little bit. It's like I don't know. It's they, they kind of planned it perfectly in that way, where it's like you're gonna. They know you're gonna watch all of them. Damn, you know what yeah, I mean? They got you ready to go. They kind of got you, dog. So it's like you're deep. But it's like I wouldn't say that though. I wouldn't say you have to watch all of them to appreciate those movies. For sure, like legit. Like you could probably, I could probably pick like three of them. You know what I mean? You get the gist of it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like three general ones, and you probably get the gist of it. You get the point. I like the Wolverines were dope. I watched all the the Wolverines were the Logan. Logan was fire. That's my favorite. I think that's my favorite Marvel character, yo. Wolverine. Yeah, me too. Gambit. Him and Gambit when I was a kid, those were my guys. Wolverine and Gambit. I was an X Men guy growing up. Me too. X Men. I used to watch X Men before school, dog. Yeah, man. I had the cards and shit. X Men was the shit. That was the shit. X Men was like hardcore. You know, it wasn't like that other. You know what I'm saying? It seemed like more like like adult. It didn't seem like childish. It didn't seem childish. The it's vocabulary in, they used, yes. the like things that what was about the the plot points of the show. You know what's funny? Um, my boy put me on to Batman the animated series, like the old the old cartoon Batman show, bro. It's like that shit's dope. Like and they got like good storylines. It's it's, like it's it's like bro gangster shit. It's like like I, I don't mean gangster as in the like, term. I mean like an actual like mob stuff. Like that's yeah, what like, yeah, this yeah, thing's yeah. about. Like and it's like political things. It's like adult themes, like through and through, through and through. It's very. There's some childish shit, but hardly. It's really like, like wow, you thought I thought this was a kids' cartoon. It's like not really. But it has like heavy, yeah, like heavy plot lines. Yeah, shit, big time, like, especially certain episodes. And I was like, whoa, I was kind of impressed because I, oh, I was a fan of the of their animation, of like the like the movies, like the mm-hmm. Batman movies with their animation, but their movies. That's where they get most of the ideas for the movies from, from those animations. Period. From the from the first show. Yeah, yeah. No, not from that show. Because what they do is like a lot of these popular, like the most popular comics, they'll make them animations, like a movie. Like an hour and a half movie. Oh. And they'll make okay, it, okay. but it's animated. And like, if you don't know to look to that, you'll just think it's a cartoon. You'll be like, all right, whatever. But if you watch it, it's like, these are better than the movies that are coming out. Like better, yeah. Better. No, like better plots, better everything. Better acting, better. It's like, they're better than the movies. And it's like, um, they, they should have just made this the movie and they would have had a way better. Like, they would have had a Marvel run. Like how Marvel's doing right now. Yeah. Like the success of those movies and how they're always good and like everyone loves them. DC could have done that if they would have just made these animations into straight up. Just turn that into a movie and that's it. Like no, yeah, no trying to change it up or nothing. Exactly. Like they switched it up and then change the plot. Or a lot of them, yeah, a lot of them just the the producers get in there and they fuck it up. Damn, who else is DC? Oh, um, oh is it, is the characters? No, like uh, Batman is dope, but the Batman movies were dope, bro. Yeah, Batman the last begins, one is super hard. The, um, the last one I'm trying to, with Pattinson, uh, the, the newest one that came out. You see it. A little bit, dog. It's so dark, bro. I couldn't. Yeah, you didn't. Fuck. You didn't get into it. You didn't dark. get. To, I loved it. I loved it. Fine. I'm gonna watch it again. Did I? Did I even finish it? It was mad it's dark. It's super bro. dark. No, it's super I was dark. Like, what the? F-? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I gotta yeah. watch it again. Dog. <laughs> it's 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 fuck, dark. Man. It's emo. It's emo as fuck. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's why I like it. <laughs> but I like it though. I like it because it's like it's like showing a Batman a year two Batman. He doesn't even have control of it yet. He still goes too far. Like beats people up too much. Still like mad. He still hasn't even developed Bruce Wayne yet. Like the alter ego of Bruce Wayne, like he's a playboy and kind of a ditz. He hasn't yeah. even developed that yet. So they're going to go deep. This one's going to go. That's what I gonna... think. That's why I think they're de- they're introducing him now to leave it open for like his, like to grow. And get older and get, because uh, they're saying this, this Batman is like younger too, right? It's year two Batman. That's uh... It's literally year two. He's, he's only been Batman for a year. He's the second year is Batman. That's where the story starts, basically. It's crazy, right? I wonder if we knew when all these things came out back in the day that yeah. we were going to be watching this for the rest of Forever. our lives. Forever, yeah, yeah. They were like, yo, right. by the way, you don't even know. We're going to yeah. go back and just do all the James beginning Bond stories. James Bond started all this shit, man. James Bond was the first IP that really has lasted like that over the years. And you're like, you know, James Bond is going hard right now. Think about it. That shit ain't done. That's the same kind of thing. 
Think about how long people have been watching James Bond. It's like, damn, they're still making James Bond movies, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> oh my god, think bro. about I it. I haven't 60s, seen a James Bond in 60s, a while, dog. Sixties, right? Started in the sixties. Sean Connery, a long time, bro. A lot, a lot. Yeah, the Pierce Bronson. That's where the movie, the show, the movie, the the, the mm-hmm. game came out, bro. Yeah, bro. That shit's timeless. Goldeneye, dog. hell yeah. Goldeneye, Goldeneye was shit, legit. People are still playing bro. Goldeneye still right play now, Goldeneye. dog. We still play Goldeneye. Um, my boy might have it at his. Uh, thank you, Miami. Uh, Alex, he might have it at his shop there, dog. He has like little uh, Nintendo oh, sets, yeah. like all the games, and you can like pick you know that's what i'm saying dope. damn that's wild bro yo ayahuasca for sure we gotta go to we gotta yo, go to the amazons in, like but we need to like to, we need to go to lima and then we need to like take a plane to the amazons yeah, to you know the what Amazon. i'm saying exactly but we need to get a good shaman bro. Got, that's, what I'm saying. That's, shaman. What, that's what i mean though we gotta like know have it's gotta he's gotta be vouched he's gotta be vetted he's yeah. gotta like people have already that we know have already he's gotta have there. dreadlocks uh, i can't have no shaman younger than me bro yeah. I mean, i've been in Th- asia i've been in thailand i've been some dealing, these young ass shamans like yo how the fuck are you 25 yeah what? chill with that no trauma yeah what have you been through guy tell me let me see your resume of what you've been through champ it's like, yo, you, how many... I don't care if you've been trained to do this. What have you been through in life? Yeah, dog. I mean, you yeah. know some trauma. I was like, how many fucking family members you got dead? What drug addictions, you know? You know what I mean? You know? Like, yeah. Well, how many drug addictions are in your family? How like, many how times much, you got in jail? Like, how much your- domestic violence have you witnessed? <laughs> like, before we talk. Like, come on here. <laughs> like, I need to really know you fucked your life yeah, up Yeah, how many betrayals side, have you been dog? through? Yeah. Like, <laughs> how many broken hearts? Talk to me. At 25, dog, they still got too much fucking good in their eyes, bro. Too much. That's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, a little too green, a little too green for that deep of a situation. Oh my gosh, change my life? I don't know. I don't think you're equipped yeah, at that nah, age. I'm like, Yo, I can help you, bro. Yeah, I can help dog. this motherfucker. Matter of fact, dog. let me run this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just never come back. Though. I'll just become a shot and be like, yeah. Yo, Emilio was doing comedy, and then he went to fucking. He went to go change life, and I guess he changed his <laughs> life. <laughs> I guess it worked. Him and Ivan left, and they never came That's back. Dog. Yeah, yeah. I heard they're running a resort. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, just making beats on fucking mad. Yo, you're yeah, just yeah. going deep, making turn beats that on the fourth dimension. I have no chance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, no problem. <laughs> you can just make beats to get people through the thing. Though. You oh, can do like a four hour. It, yeah, you it. can do a four hour track. So like a score for the whole trip. Like score the whole shit. You know what I'm saying? I think it's longer than four hours. I think ayahuasca is for sure. I think it's like eight. It's like eight to twelve. You know, my boy took the one, the idol gain or something, the one, the frog, where they do like the, oh, like, like yeah, the frog yeah, or something yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah, he did that one where like you get sick, bro. And, like you mm-hmm. just, it's like a, it's like a purge. And Isn't ayahuasca real, like that? I heard in ayahuasca, you do that too, mm-hmm. which is why they say you got to eat really good because you're yeah, going to start like, clean. Yeah. yeah you're going to start purging clean. all that stuff. They say that you purge out all like the bad energy and stuff like that, you know? So you shit yourself too, or you just throw up? Fuck, I hope not. I dog. think you shit yourself. <laughs> you might, bro. I think you Imagine, might shit yourself. Dog. You lose control of the bowels. That would be weak sauce. That would be whack. Embarrassing. That would, f- <laughs> <laughs> that's that would fuck up your trip. Yeah. Oh, that's another thing too, though. People... I like to be clean in my trip, dog. I got tripping pants and everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, was... <laughs> I got my comfort clothes. Facts. Hundred percent. My hoodie and my tripping hoodie. Yes. You know what I mean? That's another thing too. You do it with a bunch of people, dog. And I heard people do it, and I did. They go to these little places and prove, but they have bad experience, and they'll see like the person next to them like tripping out. And yeah, shit. bugging that's, out. That's the thing where I'll be like, um, mm. you gotta trip with like the good, the right people. Yeah, you bring you know your own saying? squad. Like you bring the squad of people. You know, yeah. a bunch of strangers tripping out, losing. Yeah, I don't know. Nah, I don't that. know. I don't know about that. And then they do like meetings afterwards, like how, and they talk about it and shit. Yeah, yeah, that's the experience, like. Eh. I'm down, but we got to find a good guy that's certified. I still don't have met nobody who's actually been there. I have. I have. And they know like good yeah, spots, yeah, you think? Yeah. I have a couple people actually that, that can help us in that department. Damn. I don't, there's no ayahuasca in Miami, huh? Uh, not legally. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's here. It's I'm just pretty... the bark, bro. It just comes from the ground, dog. That's yeah, what always trips me out with these with the psychedelics, dog. All Even mushrooms, right? Yeah. Some come from shit. Some come from the ground. It's, it's... What is... Some come from rice. I know dudes who make it from rice. Yo, what is going on with mushrooms, dog? When you, there's another di- for sure, like with the psilocybin. Yeah, there's like another dimension that we're hitting that we're not. Yeah, it's like our barriers yeah. are down, right? Or, but I think that's what that's what they say about the them. about the DMT. That's what this, that's what's supposed to the DMT supposed to do more than anything else. Uh, that's in your eyes. This, the, they the say pineal, the pineal gland. You yeah, mean? they think when you die, your body releases all the DMT. Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. That's that's the dream drug or whatever. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to release that. It's supposed to look the, the the chemical that. The chemical that releases when you die, right? Yeah, that's yeah. supposed to be what it and is. I think when you die, everything. I think you just live your whole life like pff, real quick. So I guess that's like what the DMT trip is, you know. I know Joe Rogan talks about seeing like the people playing the drums and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I saw like weird shapes when I closed my eyes. It was like uh, I don't know, like a honeycomb meets a pyramid. Bro, I remember I hit it. I hit the bowl right, and then um, as I was hitting it, I was like, oh, I felt myself disappearing. Like, 
You know okay. what I mean? It's like, oh shit, where I could see myself like going into the matrix, like we're like all my body, and then like I felt like my legs going, my arms, <laughs> but then like my chest part, I wouldn't let go. And that's where yeah. I got stuck in like this got weird you. trip where I was like, I'm definitely tripping. I saw my my boy did it. I saw him, he was like meditating in the sun like this. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> he's, <laughs> like, in. he's fucking tripping. He's there. He's there. That's dope. I was super jealous, dog. Yeah, I definitely got to do it again. I'm actually going to probably make the call when I leave here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got know, you hit me up. Yeah, I'm like, yo. As a matter of fact, let's do this properly. You ever um, you ever do some writing on, I've, I've wrote, have you ever done any writing or anything? Like, I'm just taking some, type, like, some shrooms and write and like do like a microdose? And I mean, I write all the time. Stuff? I write all the time. I've written under an influence of a bunch of different stuff. Um, Any influences that bring you the best? Like uh, some I, good, like anything uh, un, unassumingly good? Um... I don't know tripping, tripping. I don't. I don't ever really. I mean, I've created. I've created some stuff here and there, but usually it's more of like a, a disconnecting kind of thing. You know what I mean? It's more of a bigger picture, or just completely disconnect. Just get just get lost with some friends and just have some fun. You know yeah. what I mean? Like completely recreational, um, or a crossroads kind of like make a decision. Like I like have like something I'm going through. I'm like, you know what? Let me just trip on myself. I've That's what like, I usually do with the mushrooms. And then I'm had just just deep dive and just like really try to think about things I need to think about. Like that's I've done that for that as well as well. But like to be creative, I usually, I usually do other drugs for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the Hunter S. Thompson tip, you know what I mean? Exactly. You hear yeah. his cocktail? There you his go. Cocktail is crazy. It'd be like two shots of mescaline and a little. Yeah, and I'm not that crazy, but it's beers. He's yeah. like, yo, he was a wild. Man. I'm not that crazy, but uh, I could definitely, I, I, I could definitely make my own little little cocktail list. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's for the Patreon. That's for the other. Yeah, episode. exactly. <laughs> hey, so you write every day and like? Um, I try to. Do you force yourself to write? Like, you get the. Um, writer's I, block I'm getting shit? back to that. I'm getting back to scheduling it every day because it's a muscle just like anything else and it's cool to keep that shit fresh yeah because the more you do that like writer's block becomes the thing of the past it's like a different thing you don't rely on inspiration it's more of a muscle you can uh. do it whenever you want kind of thing you know what i mean so that's why i try to like make it scheduled i actually try to schedule it from like 9 to 11 just try to write you know that's a good thing right that's yeah. nice no it's just like anything it's like you know training yeah. anything you schedule it bro like at least for me that's how my mind works the best yeah, for me right now, for writing jokes too, though, like when I wake up, um, in the morning, right when I wake up, is that I feel like the best time. Yeah, before yeah, I try to do it early. Before all the crazy and the chaos of the world. You know? I so, try to like work out, not work out, but at least go for like a long walk with my dog or whatever, you know, like a 20, 30 minute walk or something, and like get the blood pumping. That helps too, bro. Yeah. I'm doing a little walk and to then, try to get my son. And then, boom, you get the sun, you go out as I go on my balcony with some coffee, get some sun, you know, put the speaker on or put some headphones on and just go for a little bit. You know what I mean? That's, the, that's a great way. Ah, do you write pen or like you type? I dictate or I type. Dictate is like... I just uh, say it. Like say it into oh, the phone and then it types smart. it. You know, like when you dictate oh, your Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I don't have to like type it and like lose my thought. I should thought. do that, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to do more dictate, dog. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's the way to go. I write pen and then I, and I can't understand it when I mm -hmm, go back. That like, happens. Fuck, or you're you know? trying to like write the word and you forget the idea as you're writing. At least me, that happens. Like yeah, and I type real slow, so then that's why I write. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I got decent at typing fast, but then I'm like, why don't I just dictate it? Because it'll I can say the whole paragraph and it'll just come out. And then I have to fix a couple words. But by then like, it's there and I know what it is. You know what I mean? Like, like my whole thing was I, st I used to write and then I stopped writing, period. I would just memorize everything. For like three albums, I did that. No way. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, uh, I started in YMF, and then I did it for like up until maybe two years ago. I was memorizing everything. So wait, you have an idea like Jay Z, and like you have yeah, an idea, yeah, exactly, and then, like, like and then exactly. Drift, hit it, and then boom, exactly. Yo, turn it's, it on, boom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just have the idea, just keep going over my head, keep repeating my head, and then I got right, verses done. Boom, was recorded. Oh. Like yeah, yeah. That's how I did it. Yeah, that's how, yeah, yeah, for sure. And your boy would just be there, ready to go, and put it together. No, no, like, I would do that at my own time. I would do the real time, and then by the time I'm in the studio, boom, it's ready to go. How good quality can you record at home? Like almost with the like. I like mean, these you, days. Yeah, right. With a with a budget, perfect, hundred percent. Like you can studio. invest in your own little like. Oh yeah. For your studio time, you don't do you have a, now? I guess now you're in the level where you're not like looking like because when people come up, like they need like studio time. No, right? I still, like, I still, I still book. I still book, book? with my engineers. Okay. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. My, oh, that's like in, the, in one of those big joints, right? Where they have all a couple the freaking. Um, I mean, one of one of them's not huge. I would say it's a little bigger than this, but out, but um, maybe twice this, a little less. Okay. A little less than that. It's not that big. And they have like the separate, but you have the room for you, right? You have your room. No, you but that. no. They don't even, like, you mean a recording booth? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not even. I mean, I record, I definitely have studios that have that. Like Flow State has that. Another, like uh, Mix Masters has that. A few, you know, but 
I with the with the quality that we have, you don't even need to do that anymore. That's crazy, much. man. Yeah, you really don't. Because I mean, think about it. Look, look at the quality we got right now. With yeah, this. it's not bad, right? It's, it's, it's good as hell. As long as I'm right here, it's like think about how clear that is. And now imagine if you put like one of these things around it. Imagine yeah. how clear that all sounds. You no know, AC, no nothing. Like, you know what I mean? With that, that's perfect quality. What do you recommend for this? Do you think I should put those things on the roof too? My boy was telling me I should put them right here. I think? think you just need to insulate this a little bit. That's what I'm saying, right? Yeah, that's it. Just like insulate like here stuff, right? and, and there because that's where it's going to bounce. Oh, so on the corners, you think? Up. We'll see how it goes up like that and uh-huh. bop, 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 bop. That's where your sound's bouncing. Oh. And this, if you put the light in front of this and you close that, it'll help too because that curtain is perfect to keep sound out. Oh really? That will do it. The sound yeah, will that's off that. that sound will that thing will 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 keep it from bouncing off so much, and it'll absorb it more than bounce. Oh okay. Because nice. it's because wow. it's fabric, so it'll absorb the the sound more than bounce off it. And then if you put some insulation here and some up top, that should be fine. You should be good to go. It sounds good as it is, but yeah, it'll just sound even better. Hell yeah, yeah. I'm down. I'm gonna keep leveling up. That's what yeah. I love about this shit, right? Yeah, like you do it. Yeah, piece by piece. Oh, and like you were saying, dog, you you did all this work, right? You, I yeah. You do it for free, and then, bro, you put that good work in it when you do yeah, your best. And then exactly. You, That's what happened to, with me, the editing. It's happened with me, the yeah, acting. It's happened with everything. That, like, the editing, I started because of necessity. I was like, I want my quality to be up, but I can't pay these motherfuckers every time. It's too expensive. Yeah. So I pay you for the one video. I learn how to do it myself, and then I'll take my mediocre knowledge and then work on my own videos. And then the next big video, I'll give you again, and then I'll do the same thing. So that's what I've been doing. Yeah. And before you know it, now I'm getting paid to edit videos. Hell yeah. And it's like that book. I was reading this book. Or getting, uh, get, uh, thinking, grow rich. He's saying like you got to be able to do some work for free. Yeah. You know, before you ever want to get paid for it. You know what 100%, I'm saying? hundred percent. A hundred percent. That's like, that's obvious. That's you got to prove your value first. Exactly. Got to prove that experience. And and putting in the work. Yeah. You got to put the time of learning that shit and exactly. sucking at it in the beginning, like mm-hmm. we were talking about before. Dog, yeah, you know? brother. A hundred percent. That's great, man. Yeah. And so, what was your last album that you had just come out right recently? Um, the last one was called the uh, The Pensive Stoner Ponders. Okay, that's what nice. It's called. Yeah, that yeah. was on Spotify. People yeah, it's everywhere. It, right? mm-hmm. It's everywhere. And I'm about to drop uh pff, in the next couple months. The next two months is looking like I'm dropping three, three albums. Yeah, I'm dropping an e- Well, two EPs and an album. So one EP is like I'm gonna call it Toma. What's an EP like? What does an EP mean? Because I EP is just this. less songs. Okay. Basically, extended play. Okay. So basically, things that didn't make the album or things that you know, what I mean, that's that's what they used. To, that's what it meant yeah, initially. Okay. So EP is just like it's just less than an album. It's basically I've dropped like two or three of them. That's like my last two have been like that. My okay. Last, what now? It's yeah, my last two. Work harder and the Spencer Stoner Ponders were like eight nine tracks. So they're like little EPs. Nice. And then you know I have light work before that. That's an album. It's like fourteen songs. This one's gonna come out. Thomas like. My, I believe six to eight songs, and then I have an album coming out a couple of weeks after that, like another like ten to twelve songs. And so, what the Toma will be like? Just a Toma is just an EP, six, like an appetizer, six, six like songs. here, like here. Album's coming out in two weeks. Check Toma. this out for now. Toma, <laughs> precisely. Toma. That's why I came on. You know, Toma. Yeah. There you go. So that's what I'm. That. And then I, I have that the guy from Cafecito. Yeah. Um, Jay Santana, the guy that sings on there. I have an EP coming out with him. I'm probably I'm trying to drop that on Valentine's Day. And you're gonna have like a bunch of songs with him, like guys. Yeah, so we got together. we got another like four, four, like four to six songs. Dope. And you're gonna have some lady songs and stuff. Yeah, too, they're like? all. It's it's called oh. love, etc. It's oh, just about dope. love. It's the good and bad parts of love. That's what the album's about. So, yeah. yeah. Then you got a lady now, or like? A, oh no, I'm single. I'm single. single. I'm as single as it gets right now. Yeah, it's beautiful, dog. I love yeah, it, dog. Yeah, for sure. With all that music you making, drop them albums. You yeah. better not be yeah. taking, dog. Don't be wasting all that talent, bro. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm nah, saying? We gotta be. <laughs> it's not the right time. Yeah, there you go, man. And uh, do you perform live in Miami and stuff? Or do yeah, I try ask to you, as like, much uh, as possible. Yeah. And you book that yourself, and then get these. I shows? mean, I get booked. I book myself. I try to organize my own shows. I'm like right now. I'm gonna try to organize a bunch of my own shows just to get the ball rolling this, uh, this year. Um, and yeah, try to get back just performing as much as possible. So that's like really the goal. Uh, performing live, you get more bread. Like artists, real artists, do you like going on tour? Like that's how you. I mean, the real the bread, bread is the real bread's on the road. The, the bread, real bread's on the road. On the road. Right? Yeah, like yeah, like I. T- the merch the merch sales that i did on the road were like the best i've ever done you know what i mean so it's like that's like what's like oh i was like this is a real bag like you you start realizing okay when you like when you do like 10 times you know what i mean what you invested in the merch you know what i mean 
So that's yeah. yeah. And the merch sells itself basically, right? Exactly. Like, um, you do a good job. You do a good job. And I'm looking at you're making you're making. I saw that. I checked out your shop online. People mm-hmm. they can go to your link tree, right? Link yeah. tree works good, right? Link tree's great. Link tree's I'm gonna great. use that thing. I'm always worried that people aren't gonna click on it because I have my link on my Instagram. No, right? no. You but with the link tree, you put all your stuff. Everything's you know? there. Everything's there. You give them a choice of where to go. Like boom, you make it accessible. So the merch, you're selling music or just like clothes and stuff like this. Well, through the merch, I mean, right now the music isn't available, but it's becoming right now because I'm about to. Bit a whole new stock of uh, physicals, nice. so then I'm gonna put. I just took them off because I didn't have the physicals in stock, so I didn't want to, you know, put them out there. But I'm gonna put the music, the physical like CDs and stuff, on there on the website again. I'm probably gonna get a short run of vinyls and do the same thing. Oh, and dope. like oh, that because vinyls. yeah, because that's the way to make the most money these days, especially as an independent. You gotta have like actual product because the streaming is just not cutting it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was gonna say especially like, the numbers I'm doing. I'm not even doing crazy numbers. Like if I was doing. Even if I was doing millions, it's like you you get like ten grand for like a million oh, fuck, streams, man. and that's you know that's crazy. Yeah, how about on the YouTube and stuff like that? You can get some pri- like like um, merch is where it's at, huh? Like merch is where it's and at. And the road because merch is where it's yeah the road because guess where you sell the most merch? Yeah, on the road. So if you develop, I mean, the online is excellent because the more of a of a presence you develop online, the easier the road is and the easier the merch is. So that's really where I'm focusing. Everything. I'm trying to do more local shows and just get my presence online ridiculous this year. Those are my two main goals. That's the thing, right? There's a whole new world out there online. And if you can penetrate, there's a billion people out there. You know, if you can penetrate just a small percentage of people to get you fuck with your music. Yeah, I'm good to go. And the online will help you hit the road, right? Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. what I'm looking at now with comedy. I need to like get tight on my set. I'm seeing all these comedians. They make bread. They, on the they pro, do good. They're yeah. professionals. And they, it's so much fun. They get fun, the door. Man. It's so much fun. You know what I'm saying? Every yeah. weekend, three, four nights a week and getting that door money. Hell and yeah. Then, and then merch too. A lot of these comedians sell merch. No, they get door. They get bar. They get merch. Yeah, yeah, I seen a guy selling books. A guy, a guy who does kids jokes selling books after the show sold mm-hmm. out quick. Yeah, hundred you know percent. You so. do a good set like that. Well, people want to show love. Yeah, that's awesome, bro. Yeah, man. Damn. So right now you got the albums coming out soon. So in Valentine's Day, damn, it's gonna be exciting stuff. Yeah, Valentine's bro. Day is gonna be for the the third one. That'll okay. be the third one that I've dropped. So I'm you, trying got a lot, to, you had a lot prepped for. Yeah, basically. Coming so, into the year. Mm-hmm. So I mean, there's a possibility of delaying the album to like March first. But I'm the goal right now, as of right now, I'm trying to drop Toma within the next two weeks and then by the thirty first drop the album. So then that's the goal. That's, yeah. that's if everything goes properly in the studio in the next session, we should be good. Is it all ready to go or you still got I all I had I was waiting on a I was waiting on a session from a DJ. He's scratching some samples from one of the songs and I was waiting on stems from a beat from a producer. And I just received all of them. So booked the session. So hopefully everything goes smooth and then that's dropped and then the next session, we'll finish the next album, and then we'll be good to go. Damn. Hey, hustling, dog. You're grinding, yeah. bro. Yeah, for I'm real. trying, man. Putting in the work. I'm trying, man. And this is the one thing about being independent, right? Like, having to do like, yeah. all these things, you yeah. know, like... I mean, like, I could say, honestly, that I would probably be in a way better position if I was a smidge more consistent in the past year and a half, because I just had, like, a lot of personal things and a lot of things, like, I had to move, and it was a bunch of, bunch of stuff. So I wasn't able to be as consistent. But I was still consistent. Yeah. And just not to my usual, you know, pace or whatever. Not the numbers that you want to make. Yeah, and then you feel it. You feel it when you when you know what you could do and you didn't. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, anybody trying to do this, just if you cannot change your pace and keep that pace, if not make it hard, like make a like make it a what should I say? Like a comeback. No, nah, not a comeback. I wouldn't Getting say. Getting out of rhythm. I would say never lose momentum in this thing. Try to never lose momentum because losing momentum is basically like starting over in this thing. So that's what, that's what I would say. Because I would say the only thing that I've done wrong is I've lost a little momentum from time to time. I think that's it. Uh, little breaks. And then you fall off. Not even breaks. Just like when you have momentum, you have to go even harder. You can't get complacent. You can't be like doing the same thing. As soon as you like feel momentum. That momentum, meaning like you, you go put even something harder. out and it you hits. You gotta go double. Like, oh my God, you gotta I go twice as hard. You can't be. While it's hot. Yes, yes. Because you get stale and then it's like, oh, that's what he did and that's it. You know what I mean? And this shit changes fast. Entertainment, this is no joke, huh? Especially the, especially the climate the way it is nowadays. Man, that's yeah, man. crazy, dog. With disposable content, people, you know, watching a 15-second video. You know what I mean? Like, Bro, it's, is that fucking you up now with the attention span? Like, we're going to, like... I mean, it, no, it's not... A, I wouldn't say fucking it up. I would just say you have to adjust. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to figure it out and, and, and move accordingly. I like to go... The, uh, exactly. Like, everybody's saying, like, oh, with the TikTok and the attention spans going, but... Where I'm finding is, bro, I like these long form podcasts where all these people are doing all this other shit. But I'm like, all yeah. right, but I like finding my lane. I still like keeping this. But I still think that long the, talks, you know what I'm the saying? The short stuff's fine because all all it is is like you just take 
pieces of your long material and then you have now i have a 30 posts for tiktok you know what i mean from one thing we did how many posts are we going to be able to clips for we're going to be able to get from this you know that tiktok yeah damn i suck at it i'm trying not to use it i suck at it bro i'm horrible at it i had a tiktok in the beginning and then um but i was just gonna make it like my alter ego this is before i was doing comedy and stuff. Gotcha. i was gonna make it like real, real beta smoker i was just okay. gonna put all funny shit smoking weed uh-huh. and then the first one i made they're like oh it it, it yeah broke the guy like, oh my god my, family, yeah yeah so my whole I, my whole idea died you know what I'm yeah saying? so uh, so a girl can shake her ass and tits on there all day you can't smoke a joint but i can't smoke a joint on there it's That's like crazy, this is the dog. dumbest thing i've ever seen in my it, life yo, like you could cool. sexualize anything over sexualize the bitches have naked shaking her tits completely and it's so like ridiculous this, but dude smoke a joint on there smoke a plant and it'll take you off it's ridiculous it's a plant dog it makes you better bro yeah it's crazy it definitely is medicine man yeah the tiktok stuff is crazy the whole, man the, the social media world like the the the, the, the slippery slope dog yeah it's no so, trust me it's bro. so fucking i try my best not to but i'm like fucking. I love it, it almost dog. forces that like pick me energy in the hate you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah bro yeah. it's so hard and then like when you post something that and if you have any type of self awareness, yeah, dog, you're gonna the things that get the most things. You're gonna feel mm-hmm. like, oh my god, this is the most douchey thing, but that's what's gonna get the most love. Bro, you're like, oh my god, worst. fuck. Trust me, I know it's. And then I, I feel bad I, for I, the people yeah. who get the. It must feel so good, dog. The chicks. Imagine the chicks, bro. <laughs> no chick is normal, dog. Every chick has got twenty thousand fans on bro, Instagram. It's ridiculous. Every just you were just a normal yo like a normal bartender is a now normal a, ass now chick she thinks is she's like a half fucking a celebrity. Model, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, dog. It's a dynamic that's changing hard, you know? <laughs> well, we staying in the relevant, dog. You feel me? Staying but relevant that's everybody, though. That's everybody. You know, we're all... I mean, look what we're doing right now. We're doing the same thing. I got fucking followers from fucking fighting motherfuckers in yeah, Asia, exactly. dog. So, you hey. know what I'm saying? Everybody's saying the same <laughs> shit, bro. You're making beats, dog, and we're yeah, getting it, Yeah, so. exactly, man. But it's like... I don't know. I, I'm all about promoting yourself and promoting what you're doing, you know, because that's the only way we're going to do it. But it's just a different energy that we catch sometimes because of that culture that's been created. You know what I mean? You catch that, like almost desperate like please you know what i mean i don't have shit to offer but please love me kind of thing and it's like bro some you know like you need people on both sides of the screen you need people that make this shit happen and you need people to watch this shit too and like it's okay to be the watcher dog like it's fine you know what i mean like a lot of times the watchers are who inspire the people that make the material like so i don't know why everybody wants to be that one thing like everybody wants to be a creator dog which everybody is crazy. wants to be the spotlight everybody wants to be the thing so then it makes people who actually like should do it and can do it get lost in that sauce of the people that are just like please pick me yeah you know what i mean and it's like sucks because it's like like i said it's like i hate to be like oh i'm sure like no but it's like i've been doing this since i'm a kid i've been trained in acting i've been like you know i mean i've been doing music and training music i've been doing music for over 10 years this isn't just like a i have no grounds for this this is like you know verified thing i worked hard for this and then you get mixed in with the people that don't do it for real or half-assing it and it's just like you get and unless people take that that chance on you and like go dive into your stuff you just get meshed in with them things. yeah you yeah. get mixed in with that group man that's that's the thing that sucks about the social media shit there's too many people that are doing it for the wrong reasons yeah 100 percent for the clout all that cloud, yeah the just cloud for killer, credibility for and cloud, for cloud and, and like for popularity or, yeah, or like sex you saying, or whatever yeah you know? bro like yo you don't produce nothing but you want to be a producer like what do you mean oh, like yeah. are, you have to talk to people you talk to random guys and they're like yo i want to make a youtube channel i was like all right, I'm not saying that's a bad idea, but yeah. you got to think of ideas. You know what I'm saying? It's like, fuck, dog. It's yeah. like, or have something. Yeah, I feel you. That's the thing, dog. That's like, the thing that's the, that's the only like frustrating thing about it. You got motherfuckers just doing like backflips and shit. And yeah, like, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, I backflip off this house into a burning fire. Just ah! atten- for the sake of attention. <laughs> it's like nothing really there. It's, yeah, man, it's, it's a lot of that. Yeah, hell yeah, dog. Yo, man, until 2023, bro, it's going to be a big year, yo. You excited or what, dog? I'm very dog? excited, man. I'm very excited. You got excited. the albums popping? Yeah. How long does it take to make an album, more or less? So, like, you can... I mean, I'm the worst with that shit. Yeah. Because I'll have songs on the album that I made a month ago, and then I'll have songs that I made two years ago on the album. Um, I suck. Like, so you got I'm a lot just... of archive music already. That you can... <sighs> like crazy, dude. I have, like, right now, like, 40-something unreleased songs. Oh, wow. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm like ready to just start releasing and like, wait, stop, stop with the nonsense and just start putting it out. Yeah. Enough. Just get it out there. Because I'm such a, like an old school, like I like to put the project together and make it all cohesive, make sure all the songs go together. Da, 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 da. I'm like, I'm like that with it. I'm very Oh, meticulous. like with the album, you want the album to have like a, yeah, a flow. Like, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so like, I should just basically be doing them by period pieces, like as far as like month spans, like for certain three month spans, because I'll make a lot of stuff that'll be like cohesive in those times and yeah. I won't put it out right away. So I, those songs will mix with these songs and these songs and then I'll, 
have all these songs together and not you know because of the length i take to put them on sometimes it's just like oh, oh, they, oh it gets out of sync and stuff like this kind of kind of. i wouldn't say out of sync but it's just like so much to work with that it's like almost too much to work with i should have just when i had those eight songs or ten songs i should have just put them shits out and then worked on the next one and then worked on the next one yeah because then you didn't even yeah you might forget like yeah, and then you might like something you like again in the future yeah, and, and you know I, you never know what people are gonna like does that ever happen to you big time where it's you make a song, song and you like, like and then it's like everyone's and it favorite blows up. Like, i thought cafecito was silly before i put it out and i wasn't gonna put it out no way, dog. And That's it's my so most popular funny. song. Yeah, yeah, my most popular song. Bro. <laughs> I've been making music for fucking 10 years, and it's my most popular song by far. And I was almost like, this is kind of silly. That is so funny that you say yeah. that, because it's crazy what people are going to like. Gravitate to. Gravitate accept. towards. Yeah, yeah, And what they're going to accept. Especially and like, you being it, the artist, dog. Yeah. And you know how much work. Oh, my God. You must have some bangers. You're like, this is going to be the killer. And, and they're like, ah. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's the same thing I imagine with a joke when you think you have like a heater and you're like, yeah, I'm going to try this tonight and you I'm get crickets. I'm still selling jokes, I'm still. Every now I'm like, that's a great joke. It's an amazing, yeah, you guys just don't get it. You guys just don't get it. They'll get it one day. It's definitely them. It's not. Yeah, it's definitely them. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I know what you mean. That's the worst, dog. When the comedians do that, when they, when they just make fun of, when they start going at the crowd, I'm like, all right, yeah, bro, yeah, chill, yeah, chill, chill, chill with that, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just think they're so smart. You feel me? It's the worst. Yeah, oh, denial's man. a motherfucker. Anyways, my brother, we've been wrapping up, dog. We've been going deep for a minute now, man. Yeah, man. That was awesome, dog. Yo, I really appreciate you coming through, dog, for, for sure, the Honey dog. Badger Hour, man. Hey, man. So 2023, for yeah, no, for sure, bro. I really appreciate it, man. Where can the people find you if they want to um, look for your music and stuff? I mean, duivan.com. There's links to everything. I mean, but if you find D-U-Ivan, D.U.Ivan on any streaming platform anywhere, you can find me there. Now, yeah, Spotify, SoundCloud, everything, dog. All of them. D- and-